speaker uh, for this morning session is uh, Dan Son uh, from uh, Chicago University, and he will talk about uh, some new developments in fractional quantum Hall effect. Please, Dan. Okay, so. Can you see my slides? Yeah. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to give this talk at the uh, string conference. I'm going to tell you about some new developments in the physics of the fractional quantum hole effect. The fractional quantum hole effect is a very rich phenomenon that is keep, uh, is, uh, it, that keeps uh, giving new uh, insights, uh, new surprises in condensed matter physics. But due to the lack of time, uh, we are going to see only, uh, we are going to look at only uh, very uh, narrow and very few aspects of this problem. Uh, first, I will um, formulate the problem of the quantum hole physics um, uh, in a way that makes connection to the formalism of field theory. And then I'm going to mention two a new, uh, a relatively new developments in, uh, in uh, fractional quantum hole physics. Uh, first is um, the nature of the so-called new equal five half state, and then about the nature of the excitation called the magnetoroton. Um, since it is a string theory conference, um, string 2021, it's good to start the um, talk by mentioning um, what unites all physicists. We are all searching for the theory of everything including condensed matter physicists. In particular, here you see an article in uh, PNAS in uh, 1999 of Laughlin and David Pine uh, on the theory of everything. And they try to find a theory of everything. And here is their version of the theory of everything from this uh, article. You see here, it is just um, Hamiltonian describing a collection of nuclei and electrons interacting with the Coulomb potential, um, which describes uh, quite a large uh, number of physical systems with good accuracy that we encounter in condensed matter physics. So uh, the story in uh, quantum hole physics can start with this type of theory of everything. Uh, we start with, um, it's even a simpler, uh, theory. It's a theory of two-dimensional particles, electrons, uh, interacting with uh, external magnetic field here E, here A, uh, and um, Coulomb interaction. Between themselves, the electron interact through a Coulomb interaction. So the usual um, things that is said with this Hamiltonian is that if we quantize uh, this uh, system, ignoring the interaction for a moment, then we see Landau levels of the electrons. In two dimension, the Landau level are all discrete. The distance between the lowest Landau level in the next is B divided by M, where B is the magnetic field and M is the mass. What makes the problem interesting is that we can, uh, we can take the limit of the um, mass going to zero. In this case, the lowest Landau level is single out because the distance separating it with the next Landau level is B divided by M goes to infinity. So if you want to put, uh, if one deals with uh, uh, less electrons than the degeneracy of the lowest Landau level, we have a very non-trivial problem of trying to uh, diagonalize a Hamiltonian, which is basically the projection of the potential energy on the lowest Landau level. And here the non-triviality of the problem is manifest the coupling constant E squared plays no role as the, cannot play the role of the expansion parameter because it is a overall factor multiplying the Hamiltonian. Uh, we can write this theory slightly in more uh, few theoretical um, form uh, by using the second quantized uh, language, form, uh, second quantized formalism. Um, the action of the theory is written here in terms of a uh, field psi, which is the electron. And this electron coupled to A0 and AI uh, through themselves with the, um, uh, some 
to body interaction. And here I also include um, for uh, theoretical simplification, um, um, a, a magnetic moment coupling of the electron with a magnetic field B. We are interested in the physics in B, a background field B not equal to zero. What we know is that if G, this uh, uh, G factor of the electron is equal to two, uh, the Schrodinger equation has zero mode. It has zero mode, not only in the background of constant electric field, but in any magnetic field. And the number of zero modes is equal to the number of magnetic flux quanta going through our uh, system. And now these zero modes are the modes that survive if we take the limit m goes to zero. The mass goes to zero. It seems that this uh, action becomes singular in the limit m goes to zero, but in fact, it doesn't. Part of the physics remains finite. The lowest Landau levels um, have zero energy all the time and their dynamics is determined by the energy scale of V, not of one over M. And so the problem of quantum Hall effect can be formulated as uh, trying to find out what is the behavior of, for example, the partition function of the theory in the limit M goes to zero in the presence of a magnetic field. What is Z as a function of A0 and AI uh, goes to when we take M goes to, uh, to zero. Provided that we are working in the vicinity of some finite magnetic field configuration. Let me introduce uh, one a notion uh, that is the feeling factor nu, which is the number of electrons divided by the number of states on the lowest Landau level. And that number is um, assumed to be less than one in this talk. So for gap state, um, uh, the effective field, field theory describing the physics below the energy gap typically is a Chen Simons type theory. For example, in the most famous of fractional quantum Hall state, nu equal one third, this Lagrangian is, um, is the Chen Simons. Uh, um, describing a Chen Simon's action of a dynamical of a, a gauge field little a that is coupled to an external gauge field uh, capital A. So if we um, uh, naively integrate out this small a field, we get a Chen Simon's term, a dA, where a is the external magnetic field with a fractional coefficient, and that um, describe as one can check the um, the, 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 the the fractional quantum, the, the fractional value of the whole conductivity. Uh, one can also put the system in a, a background metric and there is a coupling of the electromagnetism with the curvature of space that is proportional to the shift. That's a so-called shift of the quantum whole state. So uh, the physics of a gap states, at least for energy below the gap, um, is uh, described by um, typically by by uh, topological field theory. A more difficult question, more difficult set of questions are related to gapless state or states with a small gap, uh, a gap which is much less than the natural energy scale of the problem. For example, these states would appear in uh, a feeling factor nu equal one half or nu equal one fourth, or in general uh, for uh, state with uh, one divided by two n, but in practice, these are only u equal one half and u equal one fourth um, that one can realize these states in nature. Near half feeling, u equal one half, there is an extra symmetry that um, allows us to get additional insight into the problem. And now we know that the effective theory describing a half field and our level has the form of a theory of a so called Dirac composite fermion. Such a composite fermion has different quantum number than the original electron. In particular, in the Lagrangian of that Dirac composite fermion, there is no direct coupling to electromagnetism. Uh, the composite fermion is neutral. It's coupled to a, a dynamical gauge field and through that dynamical gauge field is coupled to our external gauge field. Um, the Transition from electron to the Dirac composite fermion is some kind of particle vortex duality. Uh, uh, through it, we map the density of these 
new composite fermion with the density of magnetic fluxes in the original theory. And vice versa, the density of the electron is related to the strength of the magnetic field that is coupled to the composite fermions. This map has a feature that it maps a half field Landau level of the electron to a Fermi liquid of the composite fermion. And that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, one can use it to, um, to, to explain cer certain features of the quantum hole effect at or near half filling. In some sense, the physics of the fractional quantum hole effect um, near half filling is a experimental, um, uh, an experimental realization of some few theoretic duality. So there are many uh, talks, uh, many um, uh, previous work that has been written on these um, uh, topics, which I'm not going to go through all the uh, fine detail, in particular, how one can make sense of the fractional um, quantization of the uh, Chen Simons coefficient here. Um, one of the uh, topics that has been attracting a lot of attention uh, lately is the nature of the new equal five half state. It is the only even denominator gap quantum whole states that has been observed. Uh, and it is uh, basically a half field Landau level. We fill two Landau levels of uh, spin up and spin down electrons, and then add up to it the uh, uh, half field um, first Landau level of one component of spin. The most well-known candidate for that quantum hole state uh, was proposed by Moore and Reed. Uh, it's called the Fafian state. Um, later on, an uh, alternative candidate has been discovered, the so-called anti-Fafian state, which is simply the particle hole conjugate of the Fafian state. On the lowest Landau level, one can make a particle hole conjugation, uh, replacing a field state, a field orbital with a empty orbital and vice versa, and construct the anti fafian state. From the point of view of the theory of the composite fermions, uh, these states arises as um, a species pair state of the composite fermion. So here, how they are uh, realized. A simple uh, uh, pairing between the composite fermions uh, has uh, this uh, tensor, tensoral structure, Roughly speaking, it's a S-wave pairing between fermions, um, and it corresponds, it turned out to correspond not to a Fafian state, neither to the anti-Fafian state, but to a new state, uh, which has been uh, called the pH Fafian state. pH because that state is particle hole symmetric. The familiar Fafian and anti-Fafian state um, correspond to a more complicated D wave pairing between the composite fermions. Numerical simulation so far um, seems to favor uh, anti Fafian state or a smaller set of simulation favor Fafian state. Uh, but recent experiments, um, that means Weizmann's Institute, seems to prefer uh, the pH Fafian state. The tension between the uh, result of the numerics. Uh, which has certain limitations. Uh, for example, it does not include disorders or mixing between Landau levels. And experiments um, have not been completely resolved. Um, and it would, it would be interesting to find out uh, what is the uh, real um, uh, quantum hole state that is realized in nature. So let me go to the second topics, which is the so-called magnetoroton. Consider a gapped fractional quantum hole state like the new equal one third state. And one can ask, what is the um, lowest neutral excitation? Uh, why we are interested in a neutral instead of charged excitation? That's because we are living in a finite magnetic field. A neutral excitation can have finite momentum and we can talk about the dispersion relation of that excitation. That excitation has been uh, studied. Um, this question has been posed and 
study variationally by Gerwin, McDonald, and Platzman, and subsequent uh, um, works. And it has been found that this, uh, there is a branch of modes, typically with a dispersion relation with a minimum of non-zero Q uh, that has been called the magnetorotone. So here I'm showing the original variation and result of Gerwin, McDonald, and Platzman. Uh, uh, for new equal one third state uh, and a later uh, um, result uh, for new equal seven third stage, which is uh, one third state in a higher Landau level. Uh, one can ask the question what is the operator that creates a magnetoroton? It's a quasi particle which should be created by acting a certain operator on the ground state. Uh, we can look at the um, uh, what uh, in which uh, correlation function this magnetoroton appears. In particular, it appears in the density density correlation function, rho rho, as a function of omega and q. That's a pole at omega equal delta. The, but it turned out that um, the residue of, at that pole goes to zero very quickly as q goes to zero, a fact that has been known already to Gerwin, McDonald, and Platzman. Uh, in particular, the power here is q to the fourth, which is quite uh, um, interesting because gauge invariants require only q square. We will now see that this fact that this correlation function is q to the fourth is a consequence of a higher rank uh, con conservation law. So let's um, write down the law of conservation of particle momentum, particle number and momentum. So for particle number d rho over dt uh, rho dot is equal to uh, divergence of the current. And the conservation of momentum uh, has this form. Here, one thing that is um, important is that um, for the system of electrons, the momentum density is equal to the mass of the electrons times the, the, you know, the one current. This uh, fact, allows us to take, um, to simplify the conservation law in the limit of lowest Landau level, which is m goes to zero. In the case uh, m goes to zero, the, uh, this law becomes just um, a balance of force between basically the pressure and the uh, uh, divergence of the stress tensor and the Lorentz force. And that can be used to um, solve the Lorentz force, uh, solve the current, in terms of the divergence of the stress tensor. J is just first derivative of T. So here I have suppressed all the indices. And when I put this equation back into the conservation for rho, we get rho dot plus some structure involving second derivative of the stress tensor to be equal to zero. This is um, what um, sometimes is now called a high rank conservation law. Uh, equation of conservation that involve first derivative in time, but second derivative in space. And so here we see right away why the current-current uh, correlation, density-density uh, correlation has to be equal to Q to the fourth. At finite omega, basically rho is second derivative of something, which is Q squared. And rho rho should be equal to Q to the fourth. That uh, can be uh, f uh, formalized further by coupling the system to uh, the metric in addition to coupling, coupling to the electric field, to the potential electric scalar potential, A0. And one can show that uh, the lowest Landau level limit uh, physics is invariant under a certain uh, volume preserving deformorphism that leaves uh, the B field unchanged, but changes the metric and the uh, A0 field. Um, here I've written down the linearized version of that transformation. The transformation of the metric is nothing but a uh, uh, linearized diff, where the diff coefficient correspond to volume preserving a um, um, no, two-dimensional diff parameterized by one scalar function uh, lambda. And A0 is transformed under this as a U1 um, uh, gauge uh, potential. So the what Takahashi identity? What the Kashi identity uh, is the high rank conservation law. 
Okay, so we now know that this operator that creates the magnetoroton um, is probably not uh, optimally, um, can, uh, is not really the density because rho um, does not create the magnetoroton very efficiently at q goes to zero. The uh, density density correlation function has a residue uh, at the magnetoroton, but the residue goes to zero. The momentum of this magnetoroton goes to zero. The operator that creates this Q equal to zero magnetorotons turn out to be a stress tensor. So here we have a very interesting situation in which the lowest state in the system is created by acting a component of stress tensor, namely the TZZ and TZ bar Z bar on the vacuum. So the spin of the magnetoroton is either two or minus two. And one can ask which one of these create the magnetorotons. That question has been studied numerically uh, by uh, um, in this paper. And uh, for example, new one hertz, uh, one third state, they found a strong suppression of spin minus two state uh, com as compared to spin two. So this line here are all spin two um, um, spectral density and round point vis barely visible here correspond to spin minus two mode. So in nuclear one, one third state, the magnetoroton has spin two, not minus two. And one can uh, write down certain sum rules that uh, motivate um, or um, make this fact understandable. One can introduce the, the spectral density of the holomorphic or anti-holomorphic component of the stress tensor and derive uh, a sum rule that relate to certain um, integral of the difference between them with uh, topological properties of the quantum mode state called the shift. And if the integral is dominated by a single mode, we know that when the shift is bigger than zero, we have this mode has to have spin two. And if the S less than one, this mode has to have spin minus two. And that is what uh, have been found in the case of new one third state numerically. Um, uh, one can use polarized Raman scattering in principle to determine the spin of the magnetoroton. One just need to shine elect photons with one uh, circular polarization on the system and observe photons. If this photon is observed with a dif different polarization, then it means that uh, part of the spin, the spin of the electron has been trans transferred to the excitation in the quantum hole state. And in this way, one can determine the spin of the magnetoroton. Now, if we go back to the new equal five uh, half state, uh, the arguments based on our sum rule suggest that in the Pfaffian state, uh, the shape of which is known to be three, the magnetoroton has to have spin two and anti Pfaffian state spin has to be minus two. The case of pH Pfaffian state is special because the shift is equal to one. So both uh, the, in the, uh, the, the magnetoroton can have both uh, spin uh, two and minus two. And uh, I hope that this can be used uh, in experiments involving polarized Raman scattering uh, to probe uh, the, uh, the state uh, that is realized uh, that we have now um, the new core five half uh, state. So um, let me skip these topics and uh, go to the, my conclusion. So the fractional quantum hole effect is an important theoretical uh, problem. Uh, in this talk, we have um, discussed two uh, sub problem. One is the nature of the new equal five half state. And the other is the nature of the, sp of, and the spin of the magnetoroton at Q equal to zero. In particular, uh, I have highlighted the fact that polarized Raman scattering can be used, should be able, one should be able to use it to distinguish different uh, quantum hole state, in particular different candidates to the five half uh, state. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, questions. 
there is a question from uh, Tifer. Go ahead. Uh, from TIFR, there is somebody that wants to ask. Ah, ah that's me, sorry, Shiraz. Um, ah, hi, Shiraz. Hi, Kobe. Uh, so th thanks a lot, lot for the talk. I'm asking a question that may be completely ignorant. Um, you explained to us that for the new equals, ha uh, new equals half uh, state and uh, for the new equals one third state, the analysis of that state was uh, simplified by taking this limit m goes to zero with that uh, kept just the lowest Landau level and sent the rest off to infinity. I presume you can't do the same for the new equals five half state. So does that complicate the analysis of that state? And uh, if, uh, how, how do you do the analysis there? Sorry, sorry for the elementary level of the question. The five, uh, most of the theory, theoretical uh, treatment of the five half states is actually done in the in that limit. So one can um, be bothered by the fact that there are Landau levels, uh, two two field Landau level, and the next Landau level is half field. But the uh, these two uh, field Landau levels are basically inert; uh, they decouple, and all the interesting physics happen on the uh, on the next to lowest Landau level. So this limit is still uh, sensible. M goes to zero for new equal five half state. And that is where all the numerics, most of the numerics has been done. Thank you. Could I ask a follow-up, Kobe? Or... Go ahead. Okay. Uh, is the particle hole symmetry still a symmetry in the state? I mean, given that the, that the lower levels are filled with electrons and not with sort of holes? Since these uh, states decouple, particle hole symmetry is still a uh, good symmetry of the five half state in Thank the you. limit in the limit that is uh, certainly a little bit far from what happened in the real experiment. Okay, node IAS. Yeah, I was wondering whether besides this. Spin two particle. There are also higher spin particles in the um, uh, composite fermion uh, theory. Um, there are um, there is um, uh, there are infinite number of these um, higher spin particles. At least uh, for the state whose uh, feeling factor has the form n divided by two n plus one. Um, these um, states have spin starting from two, two, three, four, and et cetera. Uh, these are not easily excited by photons because with photon, we can only transfer uh, in Raman scattering spin two, but in principle, they should exist. Okay, Gregor Mew. So I had two questions. Um, one is, the uh, particle hole symmetric of uh, Fafian state has non abelian excitations, right? Yes. And the other is you talked about this calligraphic S, and you, you mentioned it was a um, the shift. It was a topological quantity. Is there a way of saying what that topological quantity is in terms of uh, the turn Simons theorem or some so, other mathematical characterization of this topological quantity? So this was um, this can be uh, defined by putting the quantum hole state on a sphere. Uh, when we put the system on the sphere, the relationship between the number of electrons and the number of flux quanta, um, uh, this linear relation between them has a, has a has an offset, and that offset is actually proportional to the um, Euler characteristics of the manifold on which the um, quantum hole uh, state leaves, and that how one can define the, um, the 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 shift. So, for example, in the Laplin one third state, uh, the um, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the 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 offset is equal to 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 three, and so that uh, that that's how one defines the shift of the. Um, of the uh, the uh, the Laplin state to be three. So, how did you calculate the shift for the uh, various kinds of Fafian states? 
uh, one can just put them in on a sphere. So for example, the, 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 the Papian state, instead of um, writing Z, Gi minus Dj, one use so-called U and V coordinates on the sphere. Yeah, yeah. Are there any more questions? Okay, so if not, let's uh, thank uh, Damson again. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I guess there is a breakdown. <laughs>